This is the Retirement Education Hour. Welcome. I'm Megan Mozak, and I'm here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're glad you found our show, and you're going to spend some time with us today. We have a terrific program lined out for you. We talk about retirement planning here on the program. We also give you ways to connect with the instructors at the Retirement Education Foundation through their courses that are taught throughout the year. We'll be giving you details on those courses, how you can register, how to attend, and what you'll gain. And of course, we talk a lot about gaining retirement confidence on the program. That's what Kirk, Paul, and the instructors do is help you get that deep dive into what it takes to retire successfully in the 21st century. And I think, Kirk and Paul, you would agree it takes a lot. It takes a lot more than previous generations, what they had to do. And the real bottom line here, and I hear you say this all the time, is don't do this alone. Don't walk this path by yourself, right? Right. And really, it's the, at the heart of this show and why we've been, the, the, the charity has been teaching classes at, at all the major universities for, I guess we're, we've got to be close to 10 years, if not more, is that often people throughout their professional working years as they've accumulated and amassed the wealth they have they've made their decisions about their finances often in a vacuum they're comparing one investment to another they're making just about all these decisions based upon a short-term decision and just a comparable one versus the other where as you approach retirement it is a much more comprehensive holistic approach we need to take it it can't be so isolated because All of your decisions are going to impact your other decisions, whether it's Social Security, investments, pension versus lump sum, which I think, Paul, that's our focus today is we want to talk about pensions versus lump sum, because here in Michigan, this is a particularly important topic right now, because there's a lot of people are going to make a lot of mistakes over the next couple of years related to this. But I think it will help us draw out how this is just one example of so many decisions as you approach or in retirement that you really have to take from a more planning perspective, a more holistic look at things. No, exactly. I think that, I think we see this all the time. We meet people who, who are making decisions, whether it's Social Security, whether it's lump sums, whether it's individual investments, whether, you know, do you leave money to, let your, to your children and how do you do it? We, we often meet people who are making these decisions in isolation. And part of that's our industry, right? Part of it's For our sure. industry. But in some ways, it's almost common sense. You think about it. You would never, we love the, the analogy of a puzzle, right? Planning is like building a puzzle. You would never do a puzzle and take an individual piece and, and decide where it fits without looking at the whole puzzle, would you? Right. You're not going to compare not. one piece to the other. Of course. You then... have to look at the whole puzzle to figure. Right. It's the same. And lump sums is maybe one, of the, especially now, with, and we're going to talk about interest rates and things like that. Lump sums is probably one of the most important decisions for many people who are listening. When do you make it? When do you not? And you have to consider a lot of variables that people are not considering. So today we are going to, one of the main focuses, we're going to talk about a number of different decisions you have to make and what are some of the things you need to consider when making the decisions. But we want to make sure today is really hyper-focused on lump sum versus pension and when should I retire? Because there's a lot of things happening right now with your lump sums that are going to significantly change within the next six months and continue to change over the next couple of years, which may and should trigger a lot of people to retire earlier than they originally planned. And it, see, it's all intertwined because a lot of people don't retire earlier because of fears whether they have enough or not, because they haven't built the puzzle yet. They haven't even started building the puzzle, right? So this is what in why we teach seven to eight hour courses. These are comprehensive courses, how to construct a retirement plan, how to mentally prepare yourself to get to and through retirement without making emotional, vulnerable, poor decisions throughout retirement. And we teach these at all the universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State, uh, Eastern Michigan, Oakland University. We've even taught at Wayne State, and we may start teaching again at Wayne State. So basically all the major universities in, in our area, we're teaching these classes. And all you have to do to attend these courses is spend $29, make a $29 donation to charity gets you attendance into the seven to eight hour course live or you can stream it so if you'd like to register you can go to retirementplanningedu.org that's retirementplanningedu.org you know Kirk, i wanted to say that you know sometimes i feel like we are bashing our industry right 
As we should. As Sorry. we should probably. But this is one example out of many that our industry really has failed, right? How often do you think the average advisor is sitting down with a Ford employee or a GM employee or anybody who has pe- a potential pension and helping them make that decision, not just based on, okay, how much income you're going to get immediately, but on taxes, right, on other investments, on interest rates, on, you know, where, where the future interest rates may be. How, how many advisors do you think? There's 600,000 advisors out there. <laughs> that's, that's, how many do you think really do that? Well, not many. In, in, in Why? A, well, I'll tell you a couple of reasons. One is because there are very few that specialize just in the distribution of your wealth. The retirement phase of your life. I know it sounds a little silly that, and you probably think that someone could do all of it, but they can't because it is so complicated. The second reason is it takes time to build a puzzle. It's a lot easier to sell a product or compare one thing versus another and give you an answer. To construct a plan, I could tell you in our private practice, to construct the plan, we're spending 40 to 50 hours every single client we take on. Now, we limit the number of clients we take. That's another reason why our industry, they don't want to limit the number of clients they take. Remember, our industry is still at its core a profit, revenue, transactional, transactional gener- uh, 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 based business. It is a business. And the more profitable, transactional the more scalable, the more successful their business is. And nowhere in that does that suggest taking time to build a plan, limit the number of clients you accept and you work with, and only provide comprehensive strategic solutions for retirees. Right. That which limits is, you. Which is the reason why we taught, teach a class, right? To help people do it if they want to do it. Exactly. And, and Paul, we've been teaching these classes. This is why we formed the, the, our nonprofit, the Retirement Education Foundation, to teach these classes at all the major universities. Seven, eight hours of education. That's all it is. Strict education for those people who have resources. If you don't have a lot of resources, you're not going to get a lot of value from this class. This is to help people with many pieces to the puzzle put them together, right? And so it's seven, eight hours. You can either come in person at the universities or you can stream it live because of COVID. More people are, some people are comfortable streaming it live. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org edu.org or call 800-240-8981. There's much more on this topic straight ahead with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, a terrific charity that is committed to helping you get prepared for retirement. And they also help support charities and and different foundations here in our community. In fact, when you register for the charities courses that are taught throughout our community at local universities, there's a donation, and that goes to terrific charities here throughout our community as well. You can get registered for these courses, and it's, again, a deep dive into retirement planning, and that's uh, what we're talking about here on the show today. You can register online. It's very easy, very convenient to do that, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call to register as well. The number is 800 240 81. And I'm here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. You know, we're talking about not going it alone, making sure you have a comprehensive plan for retirement, making sure you take the time to uh, really construct each part of your retirement plan. And for those uh, in our community who are looking at a pension and have some pension decisions before them, how to claim their pension, boy, this is a decision you want to get right it really pays off to, to get some good advice in this area, doesn't it? Well, I, I think for sure it's always important to get advice. But before you seek advice, even, Megan, I think it's important that you understand and have some education so that you don't get sold or told bad advice. That is the purpose of the course, right, is to provide you in some ways a filter, right? What is, what is someone trying to sell me something or giving me bad guidance versus someone who's really trying to help me produce the best outcomes, right? And so, and it's not easy. So one, one, one piece of advice I'd give you right now on the radio is don't make 
any decisions without spending seven to eight hours to understand how to make these decisions. I know you're financially been successful. The baby boomer generation, one of the, it is the most successful generation in our history. You've amassed a tremendous amount of wealth. And with, with success comes confidence. And I would argue for retirement planning, total overconfidence. Because so many of you still think it's the investment you choose that's going to drive your success in performance retirement. And it's not. And so a great example, Paul, I think is lump sum versus pension. And I think it's really important. And I'm worried we're going to run out of time this segment. So maybe we save it for the next segment of how to calculate and what's going to happen to your lump sum versus your pension. But I'll tell you, Paul, right now, I mean, this year, before the end of the year, people need to make some decisions because in many cases, people should be retiring right now and not waiting two years or three years to retire. And it's because they're going to see their lump sums go down significantly, right? And the mechanics of how and why your your lump sums are going to go down in value is going to t- you guys are going to have to stick around for the next segment because we're going to walk you through it. But we know already January first, we know the lump sum is going to be worth less January first than it is right now, and we're estimating somewhere between four and ten percent less, right? And if anyone stops to take a look at what your pension payouts would be versus your lump sum. Right now, Paul, it's it's candidly almost a no brainer. Yeah. What that means is is that there are a lot of people who are gonna who want to retire, let's say, next year. Yes. And are gonna think, well, if I retire next year, I'll make more money, my four oh one Ks will be higher. Let's wait till next year. Not four oh one Ks, your lump sums. A- a- no. Oh, and your four hundred one Ks are gonna true. be higher. Right. A- a- and I think so they're thinking, I gotta keep working. No one has helped them understand is when they see their lump sums drop significantly. They're actually going to be working next year and end up with less money next year, even though they're working longer because of this. And, and, you know, one thing I think begs the question that we probably need to drill down as well is there are probably people who are who didn't even think about taking their lump sums. They're, they may be scratching their head saying, wait a second, I have a pension. I just assumed I'm taking the annuity from the company. Why are you even talking about lump sums? Paul, I'll give you a, a story about that. So I, I am so I'm regular as as a financial instructor for the charity, I am often on local TV stations. Right. I'm on one particular TV station almost every month, and we have retired in our private practice a number of people from that station. And that station happens to have a pension lump sum question right now. In fact, in the last six months, we've had a couple handfuls of their employees come through our course, right? Right. And then some of them we've worked with. Right. There isn't a major anchor in the Detroit market that consistently is walking around the network telling people, you have to take your pension. It's a no-brainer. You have to take your pension. You have to take that insured guaranteed money. And and the fact is, a a very bright individual, I I would assume has amassed some wealth, right, because pretty prominent person in this market for a long time, and is telling all the people in in his work environment really bad advice, Mm -hmm. really, because for that particular uh, company, business, they should be taking the lump sum. Right. They can reinsure some of that money to create the same amount or more income, but with more benefits, more tax efficiencies, long-term care features, all kinds of things that they wouldn't get from their pension. And this is a very prominent person a lot of people listen to. Right, right. This is bad advice. And this is my point. You don't know if it's good or bad advice unless you are educated specifically on all the variables to make that decision if it's good or bad advice. That's the purpose of this course, Paul. It is. It is. And and we spend quite a bit of time, actually, in the class really drilling into why do you take a lump sum? When do you take a lump sum? When don't you take the lump sum? Right? There are a lot of factors involved, and we and it's how not, to invest that lump sum, to, by the way. And, and we <laughs> know we there, see mistakes there. There's good and bad. There's some bad decisions if you take that lump sum and do certain things with it. We spend a lot of time in the class getting into that. Paul, it, I think at the next segment, I really want to jump into why we are so first how to calculate the lump sum and how, why it's going to change so people understand. But then I think we need to go further and explain. Why continuing to work for some people is going to cost them money likely, right? And why, I think people think there's some magic siren above their bedpost that's going to go off and ding, 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 ding. You can afford to retire now. You have enough. 
So they keep putting off retirement thinking they don't have enough. And many people do. Many of you who have resources have more than what you need to give you what you want. You just haven't put your puzzle together. That's why you have to attend a seven-hour course. Come to a seven-hour course. We'll show you how to see all the pieces to the puzzle, and we'll teach you how you can put your puzzle together or at least find somebody to help you put those pieces of your puzzle together, okay? We're at every major university. We're streaming it live, the seven-hour course, every time we go to the university so you can stay in your own home if you're not comfortable coming to the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That's it, and you get so much information about how to make these decisions about retirement to register go to retirementplanningedu.org that's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981 much more straight ahead you're listening to the retirement education hour Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You know, it's right there in the name, education, helping you get educated, how to get educated on your next move for retirement, whether that's with your 401k or maybe you're listening today and you have a pension decision coming up. Lump sum, what are you going to do? How will you take your pension? There is so much writing on the years that you have put in working day in and day out. And we're talking about the rest of your future. And we're diving into that today with Kirk and Paul. I want to pause just momentarily to make sure you have the phone number and the website. If you'd like to get registered for the courses that the foundation teaches throughout the year at local universities, including University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University, you can call 800-240-8981 or simply go online, retirementplanningedu.org. If you're on Facebook, be sure to look them up. Just search for the Retirement Education Foundation. And there is a, a lot on the line for people who are looking at their pension decision right now. Kirk and Paul, walk us through that. Uh, Megan, I, I love the way you open the segment by saying the amount of years that are invested, they've invested in their 401ks and their pensions, right? Again, you focused on the purpose of the charity, education. And what's so interesting and really, I think it drives all of us, us crazy, all the financial instructors here that, that are part of the courses, is that people are really trusting Brokers. I mean, I'm not I'm not picking in people in our industry like you took 30 years to amass 40 years to amass what you have and you're just going to blindly read an article or go talk to a broker and and just go with that. Don't you like to train for a job? Don't you have to have education and go through training courses like you went to school to many of you to be in the careers you've chosen? But yet so many people are going to retire without educating themselves even how to make the right decisions. doesn't mean you have to be able to build the plan. It doesn't mean you have to choose how and when to take income from which source. But it does mean you have to know that you're getting good advice. And the only way you're going to know you're getting good advice is if you spend the time educating yourself to understand all of the variables, all the pieces that are part of this puzzle. And then someone can help you put the puzzle together, right? Does that make sense, Paul? Makes total sense, and I and I think it's off. It's a huge point that often, you know, doesn't get understood. And I, Megan nailed it in yeah, the in the open. 100%. So so let's talk about why we're so. I mean, I think we're talking about this almost every show right now because lump sums right now are at everyone's all time high. And right, so you are going to have to be. Many of you are going to have to make this decision, or many of you are fortunate enough to be able to make this decision. I should say whether to take your pension benefits or take a lump sum and create your own type of pension benefits. And in history, for many, many years, conventional wisdom, Paul, was to take the pension benefit, never take the lump sum, to take the pension because it's insured, it's guaranteed, right? You have to understand when most of you retire and you choose to take your pension, all your employers are doing is taking the lump sum that you could have had and giving it to an insurance company to create an annuity of income for the rest of your life. That's all they're doing, right? And so conventional wisdom for years have been, and that bias still exists today, is that you should take the pension because it's insured and guaranteed. And I appreciate that, Paul. I get it. But I will tell you, for GM, uh, HP, uh, Comerica Pank's about 50-50, but 
most of the people who have the choice between taking a lump sum versus a pension right now really should be taking the lump sum. And that's because the amount of lump sum they can get, Paul, is so much greater than the pension benefits that you, really you could take your lump sum and buy your own insured income stream for the rest of your life, but you can do it with greater uh, tax efficiency uh, with some additional benefits like long-term care that could be created from it. Uh, you get to time when and if and how you take that money. You can minimize the amount of R&Ds you're going to be forced to take. Here's another one. Yep. If you die prematurely yep. and you have children, they actually get the, the balance of what's in that lump sum where if you right. take the pension and you die prematurely, the company gets it, right? It could be a lot of money that could have been left to your heirs that don't. Paul, in the last three years, just to put it in perspective for people, Ford and GM's lump sum benefits have gone up. It's like over 25%. And I'm gonna, we're gonna next segment. We're gonna tell you the math why it's done that. But your lump sums are 25 percent higher than they were just three years ago, and your pensions are not. Right? Do you get? I mean, I, I don't know if people get that. As a result, you can buy your own pension. Actually, you can buy more pension than they're offering you with the amount of money they're giving you. But you have to educate yourself because people make mistakes with that decision and how and what to do and when to do it. Right. I mean, you said one thing, and we don't have the time to do it, but you me- you mentioned that you said the term tax efficiency. And we could actually do a whole segment on the tax efficiency of lump sums, but the bottom line is you could save a lot of money, a lot of money. Again, this requires planning. This requires a lot of planning, right? But you guys could save a lot of money in taxes in the future by taking a lump sum. There's a lot of strategies. So much money. Right. I mean, significant. Hundreds right. of thousands of dollars of savings because it doesn't... You taking your pension impacts taxation on your Social Security, on your 401ks and IRAs. It does. And RMDs, RMDs, right? right. Because here's a quick exercise. Everyone listening, I hope a lot of people are listening this week. Just project forward based upon a reasonable growth rate. Use 3% even if you want. How much money your 401ks and IRAs are going to be worth in your mid-70s? So let's say it's a million dollars. If it's a million dollars in your mid-70s, you're going to have to take RMDs of close to $50,000 a year. Plus, that's all taxable money. Plus, you're going to have to take your pension, all taxable money. Plus, you're going to have to take your Social Securities, taxable now, right? So some of you have been smart and saved non-IRA money. Some of you saved some Roth money. Many of you aren't even going to use those dollars or be able to use those dollars because of the mass, the sheer amount of money you're going to have to take from your 401ks, IRAs, and your pensions. These are the things we're educating you about in our classes. So you know what things are going to look like in 10 years from now so that you can construct the puzzle to make it as least painful with the greatest opportunity of best outcomes for the rest of your retirement years. Does that make sense? It does. Seven hours we spent, seven, eight hours at all the major universities, no excuses. We have courses everywhere around the Michigan area, literally. You can even stream it from your home, although I think there's more value when people come in person. But you can stream it. It's a 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend one of our courses. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we're glad you've tuned into our show today. This is the Retirement Education Hour, and it is all about education, and we're helping you do that on the show today, really spotlighting the importance of helping you get educated when it comes to your lump sum pension and those decisions that surround it. As we mentioned, you've invested so many years, time, energy, working day in and day out. You want to get this decision right. It's the rest of your life we're talking about here. It's your money. So how do you make sure you're making the right decision for yourself? Well, there's a lot that goes into it. And I do want to tell you that Kirk Paul, the instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, 
They help you out throughout the year, teaching courses deep dive into retirement planning, helping you gain confidence. If you'd like to register, we want to make sure all of our listeners have the information to get registered. You can do that online at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. We're talking about lump sum pensions. You said that those are going down. What do you mean by that, Kirk and Paul? Okay, so here's the math. And I hope people are, are, if you're driving, pull over for a minute. Because we want you to understand the math and why we think it's particularly dangerous for some of you who are close to retirement to even continue working. I know it sounds crazy. (laughs) I'm sure the regulators love us saying this. But it's, it's the math, right? So look, just in 2018... And I'm pulling the chart up so I get the numbers exactly right. In 2018, the 10-year corporate rates, the 10-year corporate bond rate was at 4.36%. Now, you need to understand the 10-year corporate bond rate is once you're fully vested and you've been working for an employer for a while, that is what dictates whether your lump sums go up or go down. It is directly correlated to that 10-year corporate rate. All right. And if in 2018, the 10-year corporate rate was at 4.36%, and then this past year, we got as low as under 2%, that means the 10-year corporate rate has gone down over 2%. It's almost, I think it's like 2.3%, 2.4%. And the general rule of thumb is as the 10-year corporate rate goes down, your value of your lump sum will go up. So, it, and, and here's the rule, for every 1% the corporate rate goes down, your lump sum goes up 10%. It's a round number. I know it's not exact, but it's a round number. So that tells us since 2018, the corporate rate's gone down over 2%. Your lump sums have gone up over 20%, almost 25% in many cases. All right, so here's our problem. All of you are smart enough to know interest rates are going to rise. And the 10-year corporate rate is already risen. From last year, we are from the bottom at one, about 1.9%. We have hit 2.7% in April on the 10-year corporate rate. In June, we are at 2.55%. They are getting ready to observe. This observation in the next month will determine, starting in January, what your lump sum payout will be, Paul. Right. And it's not a matter of, is it going to go down? It's a matter of how much is going to go down. It's your going, lump sum. Your lump it's sum. going down. It's going down. It's already, right now, if they were to observe today, it's it's going to be down between 5 and 6%. Meaning if you have a million-dollar lump sum, it's now worth fifty to $60,000 less. And I'm going to tell you, as the Fed tapers, which I don't want to get too wonky, as many predict, interest rates are going to go up. That 10-year corporate rate, I mean, it's close to all-time lows. It's going up. And when it goes up, for every 1% that rate goes up, That means your lump sum is going to go down 10%. So this is why Paul and I are so concerned. Not just Paul and I. A lot of people are concerned. I can tell you all of our instructors, we talk about this regularly. In the next two to three years, it's very reasonable to believe the 10-year corporate rate will go up another 2%. Back to 2018 levels. I think it's going to go higher personally. That means people's lump sums over the next couple years are going to come down 15, 20, 30 percent, and we're not exaggerating. In the next couple of years, your lump sum is likely going to be worth 20, at least 20 percent less. Paul, what is the likelihood in the next two to three years we're going to have some sort of major market event? Yeah, I mean, so so in addition to lump sums going down, people are sitting on all time highs in their 401ks, right? So they think they like they, it's theirs now. It's right. not yours. <laughs> right, right. I mean, we haven't had the longest bull run in history. The market's up. Four, five hundred percent since the bottom of right. 2008. We're so, going to have a correction. So, right there, here's the perfect storm, right? In year, two years, right? People's not only their lump sums are going to go down, they're going to see their, you know, if they see a, a correction, they're going to see their 401ks, 403bs, right? They're going to see those go down significantly. And then, you know, in essence, they've worked additional one year, two years, three years, thinking they've saved a lot of money thinking they've amassed more, now they can retire and they're going to have a lot less. They are. Hear us. For many of you, it is safer for you to retire now than in the next couple of years instead of waiting. Not everybody, but many of you. Many of you who have what you need to give you what you want, who use the excuse of 65 to get your Medicare. (laughs) Folks, nothing magical happens when you go to Medicare. Insurance is still expensive. It's just a little less expensive for you. 
than if you went out and bought your own insurance right now. Stop using these excuses. The real truth of why many people aren't retiring, Paul, is they don't know what they have and what it can give them. And they're scared. And it's not going to be any less scary in two years or four years. It's not going to be any less scary. It's going to be more, in fact, it's going to be more scary potentially. Potential. And we are going to argue that it's going to be because this is what we strongly believe, right? What will drive, potentially drive our next recession? We're not alone here. We're not on a limb here making a call. What will likely drive the next recession will be interest rates rising. And interest rates rising mean your lump sum's going down. A recession means your 401k goes down. A recession means you 60-somethings, especially in the automotive industry, are unemployed. Are unemployed. Don't think there's not age discrimination. Don't think that doesn't exist. And the older you are, you might think you're very valuable. But that there's many of you getting paid a lot more money than your counterparts 30 years younger than you. And when the, when the economy struggles, you are the easiest and first ones to go. We've seen that. I mean, we've, we've seen it already. So don't be stubborn about this. Right. This is it. This is why you got to educate yourself so you even know the variables to know whether you should retire and how to retire or even how to choose somebody to help you retire. Paul came up with a topic that we are for sure going to do, I think, in our next show, Paul, right? This is how do you choose an advisor for this phase of your life? And it's so different, folks. We're going to do a whole show. That's how complicated this topic is. So spend. Sev, invest, just like training for your jobs, your careers, your lives, for sports. Train yourself to be prepared for retirement through education, seven, eight hours in a university setting. If that doesn't feel comfortable you, for you to go into a university for whatever reason, you can stream it from your homes. It's a 200-page textbook, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, Kirk and Paul, our financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. If you're ready to get registered, and this is really deciding to take that next step to get serious about your future, your retirement future, you owe it to yourself to call now. Call to register for the courses that are taught by the foundation, the financial instructors there. 800-240-8981 is one way to get registered. If you're near a smartphone or by your computer, well, you can also log on to retirementplanningedu.org. Simply go to that site to get registered and you can attend the courses taught by Kirk Paul and the other financial instructors at the Retirement Education Foundation. And we're talking about decisions around your pension and what's at stake. And boy, after listening to Kirk and Paul, There's a lot at stake. We're talking about your financial future here. You want to get your pension decision right. There are some missteps, though, that Kirk and Paul, you say we can avoid if we know about them. So let's talk about some of those. Well, I I think things have changed so much in the last three years where often conventional wisdom around whether I should use and take my pension versus taking my lump sum and even when to retire looks so different. The The landscape was so different, right? All the variables have changed in the last, I'd say, three years because lump sums, I, I don't even know what the math was, Paul, exactly, but in our private practice, I'm guessing it would have been maybe three, four years ago, 50-50 if we looked at all companies, all the people we've helped, 1,000 people, a billion dollars we, we help with, I think it would be 50-50 on when we constructed that whole puzzle, that whole plan, whether we took the lump sum versus the pension. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think right now, it's probably it's over 90%, right? Yeah. With automotive 90% specifically taking, taking lump, lump sums. Sum. Yes, yeah, because be it's th- there's so much greater now. And the reason so people are often saying, why why is it changed so much? And I think most people who've listened to the show now understand like that that their lump sums have gone up a lot and that that that's a variable but they still not sure what to do with the money and i think again why it's so important before you hire anybody you take this 7 8 hour course 
because you got to know if the advice is based, if it's sound advice, if it's based upon someone looking at all the pieces to your puzzle and putting them together to give you the best outcomes, or is it just a quick, simple answer so they can move on to the next person and sell you something? We have seen so many mistakes around pensions, retirements, lump sum, social security, all of these major decisions because of that variable. They just, it's, they, they're not going to invest the time. The advisors aren't going to invest the time and the consumer isn't educated enough to understand that what they're getting is the bad advice. Right. right? I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when you think of mistakes, I, I, I can't help but think of, of a particular client who I know, advisor I knew t- you were going there. whose advisor told him to take a lump sum, which in and of itself was not a bad decision. It was a good decision. It was a good for decision. Him. But then took that cash and invested it basically in I think four junk bonds. High yield High junk, junk bonds. bonds. So people hear bonds, they think it's safe. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, and, and, high yield junk. And he, he actually he did think it was safe. When I met him, he he did couldn't believe that it was a bad decision until I think two of those companies went bankrupt. And that lump sum, which was guaranteed from the company if you would have taken the pension. Took that money, invested it in in investments that basically went belly up, and about fifty percent of his lump sum disappeared. Horrible. There it is. Right Horrible. there is the number one fear when people have to make this decision, right. and why so many people there's less anxiety with taking the pension, right? right? Because they don't understand. They're not educated enough to know the options, and so and there are advisors and brokers out there are going to give poor advice and take that lump sum and throw it all back in the market or throw it into something that. Here's, look, you can't take something that is guaranteed and insured like a pension and turn around and take a lump sum and go gamble it. You can't, not all of it. You might be able to take some of it depending on each individual person's situation and other resources they have, right? It's not a one size fits all general rule, but I'm going to tell you one rule that is for sure one size fits all is if you are dependent on a certain amount, a certain percentage of that pension income, and you take a lump sum, you better reinsure and make sure you can recreate that income you're going to need for your situation. Right. It's sort of like, it would be sort of like going to Vegas and gambling something that's guaranteed. You, you would, work 40 years to get that. You would never do that, right? And when you take that lump sum and put it in the stock market, I don't care what the stocks are. And yet, the stock market's at an all-time high. People just assume it's going to keep going up and up and up. You know, that's a huge mistake. Well, we threw the statistic out, I think, in our last show that the expected returns of the retail investor, the average person listening, is 17%. 17%. Which, in, but our industry is So if you expected, think that, guess what? If yeah. you think that, yeah. of course you're going to take your lump sum and put it in the stock market. Who wouldn't? Right. Well, that's right? the problem because the expected forward return by professionals over the next 10 years is about 4%. But be careful. That doesn't mean you're guaranteed 4%. No, and there's something called sequence of return risk, which we're not getting into. But when you take money out of which accounts and what the market is doing at that time will determine whether you outlive your money or not, right? And we've gone over all the statistics. If you've been listening for us for a while, we talk about this all the time. And our point isn't be scared of the stock market because we're responsible for a billion dollars, Paul. We got lots of money in the market, right? We're suggesting that. Your situation is unique to you. The bottom line for most today, right now, for most, not everybody. I mean, like Comerica Bank, I think of as a good example. It's 50-50 whether we take lump sum versus the pension. But in most cases, right now, we are taking lump sums. Now, what we do with those lump sums and when we're going to pull money out of those lump sums to live on and where we pull money out to live on you got to come varies. to a class you got to come to a class it varies each individual person varies right and that depends on all the different pieces to your retirement puzzle and that's why the education policy but we talk it. about we do talk about this in the class we a lot right we talk a lot about it a lot right. i mean Gosh, don't you just wish you could like reach out to each one of them and shake everyone and say, listen, I know you're really smart. I think we sort of do. <laughs> I think we do. <laughs> I, we know you're smart, and, and you've, if you've saved millions of dollars, many of you, and many of you have significant pensions or lump sums. So I, I know you're highly educated, but I'm just being candid. Reading money magazines and watching CNBC and reading retirement books doesn't mean you know anything about what it's going to take and where the mistakes are for retirement. And candidly, our industry doesn't help you with it. It just doesn't because it's not profitable for them to. So that's why you need to spend eight hours to educate yourself to know whether you're getting good help or not. So we teach these classes at all the major universities. 
We teach them every other week almost now. We're also streaming them live if you're not comfortable coming into U of M or Eastern or Michigan State or Oakland University. You can stay in your home and stream the whole course there. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. We certainly are glad you're spending part of your day with us today. We've been telling you about the courses that the foundation sponsors throughout the year. Financial instructors like Kirk and Paul teach these courses. They really are an in-depth look into what it takes to plan for a successful retirement here in the 21st century. And it does take a lot. Comprehensive retirement planning exists for a reason. And the team at the foundation, they want you to be successful. They believe you deserve a great retirement. So get registered. Let's make plans today to get you at these courses. You can do it online. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. We've really been focused on those of you listening today who have a pension decision to make. This is a big one. You want to get it right. We're talking about your future, your financial future and retirement. And Kirk and Paul, let's talk about all of the different moving parts here. What are the things that need to be considered when you're taking a look at your pension choices? Well, Megan, I I think that to understand why the lump sum is likely for most people the right decision, to be able to understand why you have to understand all the variables other than the simple looking at your lump sum versus your pension amounts and can I recreate that or exceed that, right? Can I go take that lump sum and buy my own same type of insurance product to create the same or greater pension guaranteed for the rest of my life, but if I die prematurely, there's something going to my children. It's much bigger than that, right? So in our course, what we're going to teach you is what essentially takes us 50 hours to construct the plan all the things that we're considering. So I want you to think about this. Those of you who have a pension versus a lump sum decision, and and this can apply to everything related to retirement, social security, investments, same way to approach this, right? If you have a pension versus a lump sum and you have saved a lot of money in your 401ks, remember what happens with your 401ks and your IRAs once you turn 72 years old. You have to start RMDs. And just to make your, the math simple, when you're 75 years old, your RMD is going to be just around 5%, a little under 5%. When you're 80 years old, it's just around under 6%. I need you to forecast and think forward about how much taxable income you have to take out of your retirement accounts. Then I want you to think about how much pension income that you would have to take because they force you to take it. You have to take it. And then think about your Social Security benefits. And if you're married, think about your spouse's IRAs and 401ks. And then think about the amount of money you think you have to live on in retirement in your 60s, which is going to be far less than what they're going to force you to take in your mid-70s because you didn't understand and know better. You're going to be surprised when you're 80 years old. You'll have all this money you have to take and you won't want to spend it. You will miss the time when you could have spent it in your 60s, right? And then, wait, if I take a lump sum, I could possibly Roth convert some of my lump sum so that I don't have to take as much taxable income. Reducing the taxable portion of my Social Security, reducing the taxable portion of my RMDs, which then in turn reduces the taxable portion of your dividends and capital gains. Right, Paul? Right. So one more thing, Paul. Many of you have saved money in your non-IRA accounts, meaning you've already paid taxes on money that you've saved, you might have invested in, has grown. You might have rental properties that you've paid taxes on that's producing income. You might have businesses that you sold and now you have all the money on the side, or you may have even Roth converted a bunch of money or saved in Roth accounts. Get in and, you may get an inheritance. You, that's a great one. You are, many of you are going to get an inheritance that already have been taxed and you're not going to pay taxes on right? And you're going to have all this money sitting here that's tax favorable that you'll never ever get to use or spend because the sheer pure amount of money that you're going to have to get from your pension, your required minimum distributions, and your social security. 
What a shame. How tax inefficient is that? If we just knew all the variables, mapped it out, constructed a plan, this helps you determine when you should be taking Social Security. It's not the calculator. These are the variables. And your challenge, Paul, their challenge is that most advisors don't even touch taxes. Right. It, they don't even think it's important in these decisions. Very, very true. So, so I, I think in, in some what you're suggesting is that unless you plan, at some point most people listening are going to be forced to take money that they've never paid taxes on, and they're going to be forced to take money that they don't need, right? The government's going to love them because they're going to get a lot of taxes. But and, and in the end of the day, they're not going to be able to enjoy really the money that they've saved that they've already paid taxes on. And if they just planned, yes, if they, they just understood. sat down and Educated. understood what they needed to do, and this is the connection to lump sum, they could take that lump sum, reposition it into maybe a Roth IRAs over several years, and ultimately pay less taxes in the future and not be forced to take as much money. Paul, I love it. It's an oversimplification. I don't want people to get confused. You just Roth converted. Like, it's about bracket management. Like, what we teach in the class is how to do a 30-year projection for taxes, then work backwards to find the most efficient path to manage the tax brackets. We know laws will change, but I think everyone agrees taxes are going to go up, taxes are on sale. So if we know that, let's manage so we don't put ourselves... That's the other, the whole other point, Paul, that I wish we had more time today to talk about is the amount of people that are going to be forced to take so much more money than they want in their 70s and 80s that they could have spent in their 60s if they understood all the variables and understood how to build the puzzle and get the right help or do it themselves. They need to know the variables, how to figure this out. Right. It's actually the opposite of what should happen. We want I people know. to spend when they're healthy. The go-go years. The go-go years, not, not have all this money in their 80s when they're not going to do the things they're doing. So bottom line, we threw a lot at you guys today. Imagine how much we can give you in seven to eight hours in a university setting at Michigan State in the Novi campus or University of Michigan in Ann Arbor or Eastern Michigan or Oakland University. Or if you want to stream it directly from your home, we'll give you seven, eight hours on how to understand all the different pieces of the puzzle, the retirement puzzle, and how to build that puzzle for you. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register or learn more about the classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.